The entire federal prison system went on a nationwide temporary lockdown Monday after two inmates were killed and another two were injured during a fight between two gangs at a facility in Beaumont, Texas, which is about 90 minutes east of Houston. The altercation involving members of the MS-13 and the Mexican Mafia slash Soreno Street Gang happened at USP Beaumont Prison around 11.30 a.m. Monday, January 31st, 2022 after officers at Beaumont witnessed a group fighting and responded to secure the area. The killings of two inmates, 34-year-old Andrew Pineda and 54-year-old Guillermo Rojas, led to a lockdown of more than 120 facilities across the United States due to concerns over retaliatory violence at other prisons. During this time, prisoners across the U.S. have been kept in their cells and visits have been canceled. According to court records, both men had been involved in melees during their prison terms, Pineda, who had only arrived at USP Beaumont last February, was serving a more than six-year term for racketeering, and Pineda was a member of the Mexican Mafia prison gang and had carried out assaults on inmates while serving time in L.A. in 2015. Meanwhile, Rojas was a couple of decades deep into a 38-year sentence for carjacking and interfering with interstate commerce. He had also been involved in multiple stabbings during his stint, including one at a Pennsylvania penitentiary all the way back in 1998 and one in Colorado in 2007. The last time the federal prison system faced a nationwide lockdown was during the January 6, 2021 insurrection at the U.S. Capitol as the Senate was tallying votes to formalize and finalize President Joe Biden's recent Electoral College victory. We are also following a major developing story tonight out of Texas. Every federal prison right now in the United States is under lockdown after a deadly fight at a facility in Beaumont, Texas. Correspondent Marky Martin is following the very latest on this situation for us tonight. Marky. Yeah, good evening, Marty. When you're talking about this nationwide lockdown, you're talking about 122 federal prisons across the country in this lockdown. And it all started, as you just mentioned, uh, this deadly gang fight at the facility down in Beaumont, Texas. And what we know about this altercation, actually not a ton of detail, uh, but we know that it involved at least four members of this violent street gang called MS-13. Two of those members died. Two of them were treated at a local hospital for their injuries. Injuries. And basically, this lockdown has been initiated out of fear, right, that, that retaliation would reach other prisons, that similar crimes uh, would spread throughout facilities across the country. And really, until this gets resolved and until it's deemed an isolated incident, prisoners uh, and inmates across the country will be, you know, staying in their cell. Uh, visitation will be canceled, although I will say because of COVID, a lot of those social visits have been canceled anyway. And Marnie, I did want to tell you the two men who died today, one of them was serving a 38-year sentence for carjacking and interfering with interstate commerce, and the other for racketeering. Marnie. Marnie. Pretty rare for all of these U.S. facilities to go into lockdown like this. We don't see it very often. Yeah, you don't, which is why it's catching everybody's eye right now. But really, the issuing of a nationwide lockdown is pretty rare. But I will say that just within the past couple years during the pandemic, it's actually been issued uh, a handful of times. Uh, April of 2020, when the pandemic really started to take off and cases started to skyrocket, we saw it then. We saw it last year during the Capitol insurrection and then shortly before President Biden took office um, last year. But it's something we're going to follow very closely because at this time, we have not been told when it might be lifted. All right, Marty. a lot of questions tonight. Marky, we'll keep our eye on it live in Texas. Marky, thank you. Well, prisons in the U.S. were placed on a nationwide lockdown after two inmates were killed at a federal penitentiary in Texas. The Associated Press says the inmates were killed during a fight at the prison in Belmont involving members of the violent MS-13 street gang. Two other inmates were hurt. The lockdown was ordered due to fears of potential retaliation and the possibility the violence could spread to other. Tonight, the entire U.S. federal prison system is on lockdown following a deadly gang fight at a Texas facility. It happened at the federal prison in Beaumont near the Louisiana state line. Sources speaking to the Associated Press say two people were killed and another two are hurt. The lockdown means inmates at all federal prisons across the country will be kept in their cells most of the day. 
Visits were already canceled due to, due to the recent spike in COVID cases. Well, today, federal prisons nationwide are still on lockdown after a deadly attack at the Beaumont Maximum Security Facility yesterday. It left two inmates dead and two others injured. The violence has alarmed people who have loved ones behind bars at the Beaumont prison. And 12 News reporter Simona Barca joins us live tonight. Simona. Letitia, a, nation down lock, a nationwide lockdown of federal prisons has started because of what happened here at the federal penitentiary in Beaumont yesterday. Hello, you reached the United States Penitentiary at the Federal Correctional Complex in Beaumont, Texas. The institution is currently under lockdown. All 122 federal prisons across the country are under a lockdown. But according to one mom whose son is serving time at the same facility, the violence isn't limited to prison gangs. I got a phone call from another inmate's parent that said, you know, I thought you might want to be informed that your son was stabbed. McGuire says her son was stabbed while serving time in the minimum security facility. She got that call Tuesday, December 7th, 2021. I had no idea whether he was dead or alive. So Wednesday, I packed it up and started driving. I got to Beaumont on Thursday evening. She drove from Florida to Texas, not knowing whether or not her son was dead or alive. And she never had an official response. It was the guard gate who said, well, um, did you hear from the chaplain? And I said, no. And he said, oh, well, then he's alive because if he's dead, the chaplain calls you. Violence is a known issue in prisons, but since 2001, the number of prison homicides skyrocketed from 39 to 120 in 2018, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Could the increase in violence be attributed to the prison population growth? The Prison Policy Initiative says no, and here's why. The net change in prison population during that time was a 1% increase, while the net change in prison deaths was a 44% increase. And as the prison population increases, McGuire says we all have a stake in this because it's your tax dollars that pay to house offenders. As taxpayers, uh, we are all spending um, on average $40,000 a year to incarcerate for each inmate. So it's, it's pretty sad. McGuire has dedicated her life to advocating for prison reform, and in a statement, the Federal Correctional Officers Union has also called for action to ensure prisons are adequately staffed so that they can better protect the inmates as well as the guards. I'm live in Beaumont, Simona Barca. We begin with new information on breaking news we've been tracking all afternoon for you. A federal grand jury has indicted seven MS-13 gang members and charged them with double murder. They're accused of attacking rival gang members at the prison in Beaumont back on January 31st. That attack left two inmates dead and led to a nationwide lockdown of the federal prison system. According to the indictment, Andrew Pineda was stabbed 45 times. The second inmate who died, Guillermo Riojas, was also stabbed multiple times in his heart and lung. Both were in prison on RICO charges. Now, two other inmates who were a part of the Serenos gang were injured in the attack, but they survived. And U.S. Attorney Britt Featherston said that this is just the beginning of a crackdown on what's happening behind bars. He said any prisoner who injures another inmate or corrections officer will be prosecuted. Now, the feds estimate that there are more than 10,000 MS-13 gang members. Now, many are descendants of immigrants from El Salvador. Here's a breakdown of the seven defendants. Juan Carlos Rivas Morera, Dimas Alfaro Granado, and Raul Lanvarere Giron were already serving life sentences for their work on MS-13. Now, prosecutors say they were, they were convicted of murders connected to racketeering. Now, all seven of these men face new charges for double murder. You can read more about this case on 12 News. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Another episode of Greenlit Gang TV. Much love, much appreciation. Thank you for checking out the channel. We're going to jump right into it here. Uh, the reason I chose to do this topic was I haven't read anything. I haven't watched any content that covered uh, basically a fight or an attack between MS-13 and the Mexican Mafia. I just thought that was very interesting. And right when I read it, Wanted to cover it. I have watched a lot on what they call Bloody Beaumont. Uh, different stories, different inmates have come out of there with stories, but this was just kind of caught my eye. So January 31st, 2022, seven members of MS-13, they converged in what's called AA housing unit. They attacked multiple Sereno gang members and a Mexican mafia associate. 
So defendant Rivas Moraya began the prison attack when he came up behind Guillermo Rojas, stabbed and kicked Rojas while he lay motionless on the prison floor. The MS-13 defendants, and this is pretty crazy, they then chased, cornered, and repeatedly stabbed Andrew Pineda. Guillermo Rojas is the 54-year-old and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Pineda is the 34-year-old. So 20 years in age difference there. Uh, Pineda obviously sees what's happened to Rojas, takes off running, seven on two, then take on. And it was more than seven on two because two others were injured. They managed to, to survive. Uh, but yeah, so they corner Pineda, kick, stab, beat him up. It was horrible. Two other Sereno members are also attacked, but they do survive. The prison attack lasted approximately three minutes. Pineda would further would go on to die as a result of the prison attack. And actually, it said for an exact number here, found this in a different article, he suffered more than 45 distinct stab wounds to his body. Defendants Rivas Morera and Alfaro Granada, Granado, and I'm just going to say this right now, I am going to butcher these names, okay? Uh, so there's kind of three main ones, okay? And I'm going to read their first names because at first it's just kind of giving you their hyphenated last names. Juan Carlos Rivas Moraya, 41 years old of El Salvador. Dimas Alfaro Granado, 39 of El Salvador. And Raul Landaverde Guerran, 32 of El Salvador. They were all serving sentences of life imprisonment for their participation in MS-13 and committing murder in aid of racketeering and furtherance of MS-13. There was another defendant, Hector Ramirez. He is also serving a sentence of 27 years imprisonment following his conviction for participating in MS-13 and committing a murder on behalf of the gang. Seven in total. So the other ones were Sergio Cibrian, 29, of El Salvador. Hector Ramirez was actually from Honduras. Jorge Parada, 42, of El Salvador. And Larry Navarrete, 41, of Nicaragua. In total, they were charged in a 15-count indictment. Conspiracy to participate in racketeering enterprises, two counts of violent crimes in aid of racketeering and murder, violent crimes in aid of racketeering, conspiracy, attempted murder, attempted murder, assault with a dangerous weapon, uh, conspiracy to commit murder, two counts of murder by a federal prisoner, two counts of attempted murder in a federal facility. They just, we talked about this in other videos, the federal government, they are going to bury you. So it's like, I'm reading this off. <laughs> it's like, they're basically the same crimes. They're just adding, taking away, adding words in a federal facility, by a federal prisoner, attempted murder, assault with a deadly weapon. It's just, <laughs> you know, conspiracy. You know, it's just, man, that, that's how they get you guys. That's how they wrap everybody up and put a bow on it. So that's how they're able to get all seven. Because if I'm in the group and I don't do anything, but uh, uh, Juan Carlos Rivas, Moraya, the head guy who took off on the first guy, tells me he's going to do it. And I go, yeah, I got a knife under my bed. He goes and gets it. I might as well have just done the crime because I'm getting 40 years. The way the government hands out time is, is just insane. So we talked about the victims a little bit. Obviously, you know, this happened in a federal prison, a very, you know, what's known as a very violent federal prison, a USP Beaumont there in Texas, Andrew Pineda, Guillermo Rojas. Uh, Rojas, it said he'd been there a couple decades. I thought it was interesting when I read that he actually attacked somebody in 1998, uh, you know, he, he's been down. He's been down for a long time. Pineda, his was kind of interesting. He's only doing, I mean, it's six years, but he's only doing six years. Uh, you know, but the reason a lot of these guys will end up here or the reason their time is obviously getting extended is because they're gang members. And like they said, Pineda was active. He's active. He's, he's taking, he's a, you know, he's a member of the Mexican mafia prison gang. And like they said, if you're a member of the Mexican mafia, even on a six year bid, it said he carried out assaults on inmates while serving time in LA. You know, now he's over here in Texas at a federal prison, but you're going to have to put in work. It doesn't matter. So you go in with six years, you better be prepared to, to possibly stay there, uh, uh, for life. So anyway, uh, kind of reading about this. Now, the reason Beaumont, Texas, that that federal prison in Beaumont, Texas, that has such a bad name. You know, I was going through and reading about it. They had a big issue with the coronavirus. Inmates were getting sick. They had a big issue with staffing, very understaffed. Violence, left and right, inmates getting attacked. So when this happened, uh, you know, it made the news. It was a huge story. And for the fact that it locked down the entire federal prison system, 120 other, <clears throat> excuse me, 120 other facilities were locked down. 
That is insane. That is crazy. And a temporary lockdown, I'm not quite sure what that means, temporary lockdown. Feel free in the comments below if you know, uh, if you've experienced it, if you're sitting in one right now, feel free to comment down below and explain that to me. I don't know what a, uh, a, uh, a temporary is opposed to a full lockdown. I'm not sure. So going back to it, though, the attack on the January 31st of 2022 was inside a USP Beaumont in Beaumont, Texas. Prosecutors say the seven are members of the violent MS-13 gang member. They attacked rival gang members of the Mexican Mafia and its affiliate, the Serenios. What's interesting, though, and I'm going to read this. According to the indictment, the MS-13 maintained a relationship with the Mexican Mafia and the Serenios for protection in prisons. However... That symbolic relationship recently began to fall apart as MS-13's leadership in El Salvador sought to exert more control and independence of its own members while incarcerated in prisons within the United States, the indictment states. That change led the seven to conspire to kill members of the Mexican Mafia and the Serenios, according to the indictment. The indictment said Serenio member and Mexican Mafia associate Guillermo Rojas and Serenio member Andrew Pineda were fatally stabbed during the attack. So I kind of had to read this a couple times. So at first I thought the MS-13 was protecting the Mexican... No. The Mexican Mafia was protecting MS-13. And what happened is El Salvador, the leaders go, buck that, we want to stand on our own... Basically what that says is we want to stand more on our own two feet, exert our power, our influence. We want to... Again, it's just we're going to stand on our own two feet. We're done getting protected. And there's no way to just go up and shake their hands and say, Hey, you know, we appreciate the protection, but we're going to kind of do our own thing now. Thanks. No, it has to, it has to go this way. It has to end this way. And it 100% did. Uh, just thought this was crazy because it happened in a federal prison like this. I know it happens all the time, but it said the guards watched it, <laughs> not watched it happen, but it's, it's just sitting there watching a fight. And that's how fast things kick off in prison. You know, it'll be a normal day. And, and I've watched interviews with prison guards on a lot of different channels. And they can they talk about how before riots or before things like this happen, maybe things are a little different, especially before riots. Maybe certain groups are more clustered up. There's more hushed talking, more hushed tones, kind of a calm before the storm. Um, but I really have a feeling on something like this that happened. It said it happened kind of late morning, early afternoon. They probably had no idea this was coming. This just happens. They walk up. They freaking go at Rojas. They kick him. They stab him. They get him on the ground. He's done. Pineda sees his buddy go down. He takes off. They corner him, catch him. Pineda knows what's up. He knows it's a wrap. This isn't a beat down. This is a murder, and pretty much it's over for him. But then that's how fast it takes, guys. That's how fast this stuff happens. Three minutes, two people are dead. Do the math on that, how fast they're killing people in there. Um... So anyway, there you guys have it. Much love, much appreciation. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Until next time, peace.